Hey guys, and welcome back to Off The Shelf. This week it's all about the 3DS and the Switch, but something's a little bit different around here. What, what is it? Mate, we've not only got a new set, but we've also got a new name. That's right, two retro mates, everybody. No longer Joystick Arcade, because the YouTube algorithm was screwing us in every single angle. So, we decided to change for something that honestly sounds a bit better and falls more in line with what we do. A bit, so, a bit catchier too, rolls off the tongue. It is a little bit catchier, but all about the Switch and 3DS this week on Off The Shelf. So, what have you got this week? Well, this week, plenty of Nintendo Switch and 3DS stuff. We're gonna kick off with Digimon Story Cyber Sleuth Complete Edition. So it's not just one of the stories, it's two of the stories. Yeah, right. You get to see it from the hacker's perspective as well as the, I wanna say, user's perspective. You'll actually see some footage of the user's perspective here. Now, I believe this came out on the Switch and PlayStation 4. Did. So, but very hard to find a physical copy of these things. Oh ones. yeah, like yeah. that game had a very limited release. Um, yeah, I remember finding this in yeah. an EB Games. I'm calling you and I'm like, dude, look what I just found. <laughs> and we're like, crap, Take should, it. We, <laughs> should we Take get it? it? <laughs> but no, re really fun game, but yeah. standard JRPG takes about two hours to get through the prologue. So if you got Man. time to kill, Sit down and give this one a try if you're a Digimon fan. I heard it does channel some kind of persona -y vibes a little bit. It re really, really does. Like I do yeah. remember playing the original Digimon Worlds. There's a few, mm. there's a few little callbacks to that as yeah, well. Yeah, right. Okay. Uh, from the PS1 era, so it was pretty nice to actually Not see that again. But All it was right. more of a persona vibe. Yeah. What about you? Oh man, get ready for this dumpster fire of a piece of garbage. Ooh. Paper Mario: The Origami King. I had high hopes for this game, and Finally got around to giving it a go, and honestly, I've never been so disappointed in a game like in ages. This was garbage. The fighting was trash. Like this, like little circular sort of ring thing you got to move around to line up your enemies. Like, what the hell is that? It's nothing like an RPG, like a typical Paper Mario RPG. And even then, the characters were annoying. They were kind of cringe, and like, I mean, the world looked pretty. I'll give it that, but. Honestly, I, I just wasn't feeling it, and there's a lot of forced dialogue, and I mean, this is kind of what, like, I have tried Paper Mario games before, I did play a little bit of Thousand Year Door, so I know what it's meant to be like when it's good, but this was just nothing like it, it was just trash, straight garbage. All collectors have that little yeah. game of shame in their, uh, in their collection somewhere. Got many of them. But let's uh, reset the palette a little bit and give a better taste in our mouths by going to an actual good portable 3D title, Super Mario 3D Land. Now, good. when you compare 3D Land to 3D World on the Wii, look, they're fairly similar and 3D World is just better, no matter what. But this was still a fun, good game. It was Super Mario 3D Land on the, the 3DS. It was, a, it was portable. I mean, we are getting 3D World on the Switch soon, so it's gonna supersede this entirely. Exactly. But. Genuinely a good title. I do recommend playing it. I'm even playing it on when I'm just, you know, either going to sleep or I'm bored and want to play yeah. a 3D, yeah. 3DS title. Um, it genuinely feels like proper Mario. It does. They're, they're not trying to do any stupid yeah. things with it, though. They One thing they did take away from it was the ability to fly with a Tanuki suit. Why? Yeah, I know, right? I, it, I feel like you kind of get cucked there. Yeah, but look, I mean, the forced 3D-ness of the game, using the... 3D slider on the 3DS to actually look around and do the puzzles. I actually really enjoyed that. That was really, was really unique because cool. it actually pushed pushed a feature of the 3DS that not a lot of people tend to like. I mean, I personally didn't because it hurts my eyes, but mm. you know, uh, it was really unique. It's just such a shame that not other devs didn't like push mm. the use a bit more. But that's right. Oh well, but still fun game. If you see it, pick it up. Oh, I must have for the 3DS. Yeah, definitely. Now. Speaking of games that could have been good if the developers actually tried a little bit harder, Pokemon Ultra Sun, another great disappointment of they, about six hours of dialogue. They must have got Hideo Kojima to do the cutscenes. No, no, it would have been good in that case. <laughs> like, seriously, this game is one of those games that has so much potential. So I actually bought Ultra Moon when it came out, and I was hoping, please, to God, let me skip the cutscenes, but you can't skip the cutscenes. Like the whole ultra space dynamic is sick. It's mad. Like you got all the Gen 7 Pokemon, which I look, some of them are pretty cool, okay? And, but, I mean, just the cutscenes ruin it. It's garbage with the cutscenes. You can't skip them. It's forced. 
And I actually, I'm actually trying to complete the national decks at the moment, and luckily on this save, the guy was up to the Pokemon League, so I was like, alright, I'll just breeze through it, and you know, so I can get a f catch a few exclusives at the end game, which I needed, right? Well, I got through the Pokemon League, it was easy enough, and then there was 40 minutes of cutscene. 40 minutes? 40 minutes. 40 minutes of cutscene after the Pokemon League, and I'm just like, am I watching a bloody movie here, or am I playing a bloody Pokemon game? And I'm actually playing through uh, Pokemon Black 2 at the moment on my DS, and there's just a stark difference. They just get straight to the point. There's no crap. It's great. <laughs> anyway, what else have you got? Oh, my word. Pokemon Company, get it together. Mm. All right, now, this was a title that divided a lot of players up, like... But it was the first experience of all of these Mario games for me, so I was kind of going into it like, eh, whatever. Super Mario 3D All-Stars. So you get the original Super Mario 64, Super Mario Sunshine, and Super Mario Galaxy. Are you raving on about how amazing Galaxy and Galaxy 2 are? Mm -hmm. I never played these games when they came out, so this was my first experience. What, Super Mario 64, was Mario always so floaty? Did he, I felt like I was ice no, skating all was. the time. He was. And I just and it's a straight emulation, I'll give yeah. it that. For an emulation, it actually does a pretty good job. It does. But I feel like Nintendo could have maybe done a little bit more I'm, on the emulation side. I mean there. you got the PC port of Mario, the unofficial PC the port. The unofficial, Mario, yeah. And it performs way better. And say that. I would have thought they'd put more love into the Switch yeah. version of that, but I guess exactly. not. However, Sunshine and Galaxy, look, I've played both Sunshine mm. and Galaxy. They perform Top notch, Top although Galaxy is a little weird because it was originally yeah, made with the Wii mode exactly. in mind, so you could point and collect all little star things. Yeah. And I was like, yeah, okay, I'll try. You know, I was playing with the, I was playing it with the Pro Controller. I actually got the hang of it with the Pro Controller, figuring it out. So I was like, oh, this is actually what it is. I do find the Pro Controller does drift. Not Pro Controller, sorry, the Joy-Con drifts a little bit when yes. you're not, when you're just holding it there, it kind of goes. To yes, the side. it does. I, I was doing it with the Joy Cons, I went, stuff this, put mm. it in the Pro Controller, I was fine after that. Yeah. But of the three, I preferred Sunshine over yeah. everything. It Same. just performed well and Way it better. was running great. I was like, yep, yeah, okay. Sick. The cutscenes could do with a bit of remastering now, in my honest yeah. opinion. How's it going? But uh, pretty much at this point, Minecraft meets Dragon Quest. <laughs> Dragon Quest Builders. And look, I've never touched these types of games before. I'm not much of a big Dragon Quest guy. And look, I'm enjoying this. Like, it's got that really fun sort of RPG mechanic of Dragon Quest in there. But you have the creativeness of Minecraft. And, like, I mean, it's a fun little game. I mean, look, I wouldn't go pay full price for something like this. I got it pretty cheap at EB. But, I mean, for a fun game which channels Dragon Quest and, you know, sort of building, you know, crafting games together. Like, I mean, it's, it's pretty fun. And... I mean, I don't really don't have much to say on it, but if you're into those two sorts of things, go check it out. Well, if we're on the Dragon Quest, the Dragon Quest taste here, Dragon Quest Builders 2. So, it's, a, like you stated, Dragon Quest meets mm -hmm. Minecraft. Although, it, in terms of what I could gather from the story, it felt like it was trying to mix in the Dragon Quest RPG vibes with that building, inventing, doing other stuff. Like you wake up on the shore after being captured on this ship that then sinks. You do not know why it sinks. Standard mystical power saves you for whatever reason. And basically you just get to run around building stuff, crafting stuff, it's all fun. But yeah, all in Dragon Quest. I will admit though, it's, it's fun to just keep killing random slimes that just yeah. infinitely spawning. Yeah, always fun. But it was a nice chill little game. I, I was actually quite enjoying it. I reckon if it was a, a rainy day and I just wanted something easy to play, yeah, sit in front of the TV and I'd just chill out playing. I it. think those games would be great on a mobile phone, to be honest. Really would, they actually. Really would, yeah. I reckon mobile phone with yeah. a little attachment for, your, for a controller. Yep. Hook up the controller via Bluetooth, done. Mm. I easy. reckon it would be suitable. Easy. All right, speaking of games that have crap graphics like Minecraft, but aren't Minecraft, <laughs> Xenoblade Chronicles 3D on the 3DS. Ooh, the first remaster yeah, of the... the thir first remaster. Well, not remaster. Mm. Like, oh, what's the opposite of a remaster? Demaster. Demaster <laughs> on the 3DS. Now, look, I only bought this purely because of the fact... Um, I, I want to do two in one here. Um, Xenoblade Chronicles on the Switch. I bought this on the Switch and... You know what? I was like, what's it like on the 3DS? Like, what's the best port versus the worst port? You know? From, and look, I mean... It's amazing they've got this running on the 3DS at all. Man, yeah, it's just, it's kind of... It's just... pretty crazy. Like, it, it works, you know? Like, it works, plays at barely 30 FPS, but it works, right? 
and the Switch version of this game is phenomenal. It is the definitive way to play it. It is a brilliant JRPG, and if you're a big fan of JRPGs, this is one not to miss. Highly recommend it. It's got hundreds of hours of content. It's got a sequel, and it's just great. It's a lot of fun. I've only barely scraped the surface on it, um, but I believe you follow Shulk around with his mates, and you're trying to, you know, get the sword thingy, whatever. I don't know. Like, but look, it's a good game. Take my word on it. And yeah, I'm pretty sure anyone who plays it will enjoy it. Now, we're both Persona fans. Yes. Uh, and this one's a title that we managed to pick up. It's particularly hard to get a hold of, and it's also mm -hmm. quite expensive. Persona Q. It's the first in the Q series, I call it. The next one being Persona Q2, Shadow of the Labyrinth. I haven't had a chance to play this because I haven't finished Persona 3 or 4 yet, because I want to stay away from these games until I actually finish them. But from what I can tell, they are their own separate little universe where they're trapped inside this labyrinth in another world and they have to actually team up with the Persona 3 investigation team and the Persona 4 investigation team, as well as these two new characters to figure out the mystery of the labyrinth. That's all right. Uh, it seems to, it, it's its own art style. It's its own little cute chibi art style which I actually yeah. enjoy. It's pretty good. I just wish I had more to say because I can't actually play it yet. I need to finish the game. Brilliant, fantastic. But if you see it and you're like, oh, is this a decent Persona title? Yes, pick it up because it's going to get harder and harder to get. And it's actually a very tough game, I've heard. Yeah. My brother's playing it and he says it's relentless. Ooh boy. So, speaking of games that are relentlessly questionable at that, Pokemon X. You've got the questionable part. I've got a lot of questionable games here. Now, I actually didn't mind Pokemon Gen 6. I did not mind it. And look... Pokemon X and Y kind of fall into a mixed bag. So I bought one release when it came out in 2013. And look, it was good. It was fun. It was your first pseudo 3D, you know, Pokemon game. And look, Gen 6 Pokemon, I love them. I'm a big fan of them. Um, however, they just dropped so many of the features that made Gen 4 and 5 what they are. And it kind of felt a bit bare bones. And they kind of brought it back a little bit in Gen 7 and then took it away in Gen 8. But look, I mean... If you're after Pokemon, a transfer up to Pokemon Bank and you need those exclusives, definitely go get yourself a copy of uh, X or Y. You pretty much pick them up for 30 bucks at this point. Dirt cheap. Now, next up was a title that's, I think it was only released like last year or something, mm -hmm. on the Nintendo Switch only, which from Platinum Games, Astral Chain. Now, yeah. I quite like this. Platinum Games are known for their fast paced action, everything crazy going on screen. And you take the role of either a character you get to create. They're both a, a twin brother-sister combo. And you're basically within this police force that are taking on these creatures called Chimeras. Mm -hmm. Who appear out of nowhere and just start attacking people and kidnapping people. Taking them to their world. And what's interesting is that you actually get to capture one of them and then command it as your own. And it's weird, this whole dual character control system or if your character in this le the ca chimera that you captured called legion it's going around with the chain you can actually use the chain to wrap around enemies it's very interesting however i really do wish they would bring it to something like playstation yeah. 5 xbox series yeah, or console. pc even or pc because the 30 fps yeah it's a bit how's it going it, it look it struggles it's playable it's definitely playable, and I reckon you give it a shot because it's a fun little romp on the Switch. Mm. But oh my god, it could do so much more it's on the, on the way better consoles. More. All right, speaking of games that are good okay. and look could do a little bit more personally, but eh, not too bad. Pokémon Tournament. Now, this originally came out on the Wii U, and it's pretty much the I guess the next. Well, at the time, it was the next gen. Pokemon fighting game because you had Stadium, you had Battle Revolution, um, you kind of had Colosseum and GameCube and all that. Um, but this is on the Wii U and the Switch, and they re-released it on the Switch, Pokemon Tournament DX. Now, this game is so heavily underrated. It is a phenomenal Pokemon fighting game. It like it feels brutal. It's fast. It's quick, and just the attacks they feel like you're unleashing a hyper beam or, you know, a massive you know, Dragon Rush or something like that, you know, when you're floating around as Mewtwo and, like, punching a Machamp or something, like, it feels tough, it feels like you're really in there. And, like, I don't know why more people don't play this game. They, like, if Nintendo or Pokemon Company had just added more Pokemon to it, I think it could have been a serious contender at um, comps like Evo, for example. I reckon we could be seeing this there. 
if it's not there already. So, highly recommended. The scene in Australia is pretty dead for this game, but if you can find mates to play it, it is definitely worth getting some tournaments going. It's a lot of fun. Don't recommend playing the story though, it's crap, but um, if you just want to play the multiplayer, great fighting game. Now, we've had a few Pokemon games today that have kind of just mm -hmm. meh, been a bit average. Here's one that was actually pretty decent. That's Pokemon Omega Ruby, which was released along with Alpha Sapphire. Mm -hmm. I personally had Alpha Sapphire on release because I never got to experience the original Ruby I Sapphire did. release. Mm -hmm. on, the, on the advance, because my Game Boy experience kind of stopped that Game Boy Color, so it's not going to miss me. And by then, Pokemon was well beyond. So, the, I don't have many memories of playing it, playing this, sadly, because mm -hmm. I didn't end up getting to play it. My ex played this game for me while Yikes. I was sitting in class. Yikes. So, I, the game was kind of completed for me. I went, wow, thanks. <laughs> But look, it was a it was an actual pretty faithful remake of the Sapphire yeah. Ruby series. It's decent. If you've played them, mm. you're gonna love these. And it was a decent little 3D remake of this. Yeah. So look, of the 3D remakes on the 3DS, you can't go wrong mm -hmm. with Ruby and Sapphire. Lots of new little areas in that too, with the soaring in the sky mechanic that you can sort of fly right. around in. Heaps of legendaries you get from gens one up to six. Bloody awesome. I love that little feature. Also, cosplaying Pikachu. Yes. Pretty sick. <laughs> Alrighty, speaking of games that don't involve cosplaying, Sonic Mania. <laughs> now, this game is pretty much the definitive Sonic game of the current day. Um, a faithful recreation of the classics on the Sega Master, so, sorry, Sega Mega Drive. Um, and yeah, it's pretty much exactly that. It's just another Sonic game built like it was on the Sega Mega Drive or Genesis. And it's fantastic. You can play with, uh, I think, up to. Four players, and you can just bang around, gotta go fast, and collect the rings and all that kind of stuff, beat some classic bosses and all that. It's just a great game to sit on the couch with your mates and uh, run around. I think that's what's important awesome. about the Sonic games. They don't need to be this overcomplicated yeah, exactly. 3D world. Yeah. If it's just the 2D side scroll with yeah. some great maps and some fast action. That's what you need. That's fine. It's fine done. by me. Yeah. Now, finally, a nice little decent game to pick up 100% for the Switch, and it's fun for the whole family, because mm. there's... 51 games on this. Worldwide games at that. Worldwide games mm. at that. Now, this is the type of game that if you're buying a Nintendo Switch for the family to use for family fun times, yep. this is going to be the one you're going to pick up. Anyone can play it. Don't be don't be discouraged by the M rating there. Okay, that I don't understand. Like Purely it's, it's board games! Simulated gambling and online interactivity. Bloody hell. Even though Nintendo control the hell out of your online interactions on this. Mm -hmm. But basically, it comes with games like poker. There's a gambling aspect. Oh my god, uh, really? It comes with Come uh, games that you never heard of. Even even card games based from Japan, like Takoyaki. Yeah. And um, I, there's another one there. I can't remember the name of. But then there's also things like Connect Four mm -hmm. and Slot Cars on there yeah. as well. Toy Tennis, Toy pa Baseball, yeah. Toy Tanks. But on heaps, and you can play it in. Some games worked well in docked mode. Some work well with the Switch out. Yep. You can even, if you've got mates with Switch that have the same game, mm. you can actually pair them up like for the slot car track. That's right. Pair them up and make this really cool looking track. Mm -hmm. I know you and I tried that. Yeah. So look, honestly, if you're looking for some great party games, games for the Switch that the whole family can enjoy, and like I said, please don't be discouraged by that M rating. Really recommend picking this one up for the Switch. It's a great, great title and worth every worth every penny in my opinion. Worth every cent, penny, whatever your goddamn currency is. But yeah, that's our little collection. What a haul it was this week. Ten Switch games and six 3DS games. Lots of bangers and lots of games which are just very questionable at best. I'm going to leave on the back end of the shelf and never look at them again. <coughs> Paper Mario. But if you love this week's episode, guys, make sure you drop a like, comment, and a subscribe. And let us know down below if you picked up any recent games for the Switch or the 3DS. Any Switch or 3DS games that you're going to be looking forward to. Definitely let us know down below. And also, check us out on Instagram and Facebook. We've recently made some new accounts there. We're going to be posting lots of cool stuff and all that kind of stuff. So we'll put some links in the description below or up here, whichever works. So make sure you click on those as well. But as always, thanks for watching, and we'll see you guys again in the next one. Gotcha.